Wednesday night. Then you know. You know what we talked about. You know what I preached about. If you were not here Wednesday night, for whatever reason, you need to get online and go to YouTube if you have the ability. And you need to type in APC Campbellsburg KY. Been showing the thing up on the overhead before church. You need to subscribe to that channel. And you need to watch Wednesday night's message. Because we talked about why we worship. Yes. Amen. Yes. And we worship. Yes. And the Spirit of the Lord is here right now that we lost in. I'll go ahead and give you a spoiler, those of you that were not here. We talk about God showing up all the time. Brother, Aaron, we want God to show up. But God is an omnipresent God. God's already shown up. He was here before you got here. So we need to change our way of thinking. It ain't we're going to worship till God shows up. He's already here. While we're two or three are gathered in His name, He says, there I am in the midst of them. So God's around us, but He chooses But die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp 
of the Syrians. And when they were coming to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Amen. Very famous story. Very popular portion of Scripture. We learn of these four leprous men seizing an opportunity. Amen. Seizing what was a possibility to bring about restoration of the city. So I want to preach to you with the help of the Lord tonight. I want to talk to you about the power of a possibility. Amen. The power of a possibility. Would you put your hands down? Excuse me. Put your Bibles down. Lift your hands. And help me pray right now. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost.
for a good reason. And folks, if you don't know that already, then you really uh, need to wake up from the illusion that you're living in. To know that life is short and realize that life is fleeting. Yes. And it will pass you by without a care. It will leave you and it will vanish from your grasp without you even realizing it. Suddenly, one day, things are forever changed. And suddenly, one day, things are not like they used to be. And so we have to take every opportunity that God gives us. We have to take every opportunity that life presents us. Presents us. We have to strive to be the best we can be for the kingdom of God. No matter what your responsibility in the church, if it's custodial, if it's maintenance, if you're a singer, if you're a musician, if you're a teacher, if you're a preacher, as I preached about Wednesday night, if you're a worshiper, you have a job to do. I'm worshiping because of
other people. They believed in, in seizing the day. And, and they wrote many beautiful poems about it. Brother Wallace, they said, instead of slogging through each day as if it were a miserable thing to be alive. There's all kinds of people that do that. There's all kinds of apostolics that do that. You call them on any given day and they're just so happy to be alive. So, these poets, many of whom did not even live for God, they knew that if they could live, if they could love, and if they could be involved in the things that they held dearest to their heart, it was a wondrous thing. All you got to do is know that you don't have to be alive right now, but God willed it so. Right. And you want to praise Him. All you got to do is know that you don't deserve the husband or the wife or the kids that you have, and you want to praise Him. All you got to do that every single time, not once a month, but every time I come to the house of God, I need to thank Him because I don't deserve what I have. But He gave it to me, and He demands praise and worship. He demands me to give honor to Him, and that's what I'm going to do. in person. 
Worship is always in order. And so, you don't have to come and say, Lord, is it the will of God for me to clap my hands tonight? Because it is. Right. Amen. God, is it the will of God for me to, to rub the eyes tonight? Yes, it's always the will of God. Amen. Will God for me to sing? Yes, of course. It's the will of God for you to praise Him. Yes, There's nothing like seizing that opportunity. An opportunity or a possibility to do something very great. In fact, nothing sweetens this experience more than when everything around us says that it's impossible. Whatever your circumstances say that you shouldn't be living for God. Whatever your circumstances say that you shouldn't be worshiping God. Whatever everything in your life says, you'd be better off if you just stay at home. But when you look at adversity right in the face and you say, church is where I belong. And worshiping is what I need to be doing. To know that God's going to make these things come to pass. In Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14. When they were come to the multitude. There came to him a certain man. Kneeling down to him and saying. Lord have mercy on my son. For he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For all times he falls into the fire. And all times he falls into the water. And if you notice what he says. I brought them unto thy disciples. And they could not cure him. What a shame. When the people of faith. Right, amen. Right. What a shame when the people that say we believe in God don't have the belief we ought to have. What a shame when people that say that they worship God, they come to church and they don't worship. Bible says that Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long should I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus apart and said, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus said, it's because of your unbelief. He said, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And then Jesus drops a bombshell. He says, nothing shall be impossible unto you. I'm telling you tonight that whatever you're going through in your life, if you were able to step out of your car and walk across the parking lot,
to me from afar. I believe it's in the book of Deuteronomy. As swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. And he prophesied the enemy coming and surrounding that city. He surrounded it so much that food and trade could not come in and it could not go out. The people were literally starving to death. King was walking up on a wall one day and uh, two women came in a disagreement. They were in a disagreement. They said, we made a deal. Go boil and cook my son today. And then boil and cook her son tomorrow. They did. And we, are you ready? We boiled and cooked and ate my son. But on the morrow, this woman had hid her son. And the king rids his clothes and says, What do you want me to do about this? What am I supposed to do about this? We're all starving to death here. You're committing heinous crimes against God himself. Yeah. Even your own children. And it was because of their unthankfulness and their ingratitude. Oh, Jesus. But there were four outcasts that were sitting outside the gate of the city. We all know the story. We should. Four leprous men. They're out there starving to death. They've been kicked out because of who they were. There they sit. They got to talking to each other. They said, why are we sitting here till we die? Now, I've probably preached this message for you, Francis, 50, 60 billion times. I remember sitting on the field, thank you very much. She reminded me. I probably preach it. And I've never, and I've always read this, but I've never really seen this, this part. And I think it's, I'm not calling it a great revelation, but I'm saying that it has to do with us tonight in this church. They said, if we go into the camp of the Syrians and they take us, we take a shot. They, if they save us, we'll live. Now, they're not going to say, hey, come on over here, lepers, we got some cheeseburgers for you. And we're going to do that. They would rather have marched into the camp and be taken prisoner just to be able to eat. Right, yes. Just to eat. But if they save us, we'll live. If they kill us, we're going to die. But here's what we know if we sit here, we die anyway. Yes. Church, listen to me. And this isn't it, but this is something we always have. We can't preach this without saying this. If we sit here and don't do anything, we're going to die. If we do not seize the day, if we do not take the opportunity, Brother Jamal, to get up from our situation and say, I am not going to be the same child of God that I was last week. I'm not going to be the same person that I was yesterday. But today, Look the sword. I'm going to scare everybody off before you get there. Right. Yeah. Uh, 
and marched into the camp. And the Bible, before they got there, rather, the Bible says that the Lord God caused the Syrians to hear the, 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 the hoof, the hoof mar marching of hooves and horses and the noise. And they all rose up. They didn't even pack their back. They just left. Now here's where it gets interesting. Remember why the city was in that play, in that position in the first place. It is because they were not grateful. Now, here's these men that got nothing. Anybody here ever came from nothing, so to speak? Uh, yes. I'm not talking about in your bank account. Yes. I'm talking about you came from nothing. Raise your hand. All right. All right. Yeah, that's, that's everybody. That's everybody here. Everybody straight up. I came from nothing. Yes. They came from nothing. Uh, Marched in the first ten. And they saw food there. First thing they did, the first need they had wasn't to put on fancy clothes. Yes. It wasn't to put on a bunch of perfumes or anything like that, Sister Emmett. The first thing they did was eat. Yeah. But then we see the temptation. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. We see the temptation for history to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we preach this message about these four lepers being going in and the kids and we all shout and rejoice. And yeah, they're eating, they're getting their stuff. But the Bible says that when they were done eating, that they took the things they found and they went and hid them. The Bible says they went and hit it. Because the temptation after you've been doing it so long, and after you've been in that climate for so long, come on somebody, the temptation is to repeat history and do what we've always done and be what we've always been. But finally, one, one of those lepers looked at the other one and immediately in that moment sees the opportunity. He said, we do it not well. Now listen, you're going to catch this. Because if we don't, if we don't tell somebody what God's done for us, the same thing that happened is going to happen to us. And we're never going to get out of this position we're in. Listen to me. We will never crawl out of any hole that we're in if we continue to do things the way we've always done them. If we continue to have the same mindset when it comes to church. And listen to me. I am done coming to church just looking for a few blessings here and a good song there and a good message here and a good message there. But the come to church, I want to see a demonstration of the Spirit of God. I want to see a move of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, somebody. I want to see your lost loved ones break through. I want to see everybody that's addicted to drugs. I want to see them delivered. Delivered from alcohol, from sexual perversion. Come on, somebody. You deserve to worship God. He deserves the pain. serve the Lord with joyfulness. Amen. This thing has come against you. And so, I have to have gladness in my heart. Yeah. Every church service is an opportunity to have gladness in my heart. Oh, come on somebody. You know why? You know why that I had Brother Evan give a real special push for Wednesday night? Listen to me, folks. When it comes to Wednesday night, the temptation is to be too tired from your job. The temptation is to be, well, I've got so many things I've got to do before tomorrow. But I'm going to tell you something. You are missing a great big chunk of your walk with God. You need Bible study. Yes. You need it. Yes. Worship in the Word. You need it. And where we thought we could just get off by not, it doesn't matter. Come or go. That's not the way it is. God's given me an opportunity. Every day of my life is an opportunity to praise Him. Every day of my life, what I think about every day since it happened, I think about that breaker box. That breaker box is sitting in my garage. And before I came to church tonight, Brother Emmett, I looked down and I saw the burn mark around it. And you know what I said? I said, thank you, Jesus. Because in a flash, we could have been killed. And I Shame it ought not to be, but it's the way that it is. Amen. 
And so a few days after that, I'm studying and I'm sitting on the couch in this in the room down the hallway, and I've got my laptop, and I'm sitting on my lap, and I'm and I'm just typing away, and I'm reading stuff, typing away, and a shadow goes right across the door. Yeah. And I know my boys are in bed. I know my wife's in bed. A shadow, and I felt a presence come in that room, Amazing. just like yes. that. And I went, whoa. And so a couple days later, didn't tell my wife about it. A couple days later, she tells me, she says, I saw something go across that corner just then. She said, I felt something go across that corner. This was just days before this happened. Yeah. You know what I believe? Yeah. I believe that God was sending us an angelic presence telling us 